time. They're gonna ban Bakshi too. Oh, they ban Akai. Oh, they're really putting Fairsick on the spot. The guy that is, I, I don't want to say new in the in the lineup, but new this season. And the last time we saw him on a assassin, it didn't really work out well. Plus, they're now against the Barat, so yeah. the only choice he has is the Boxia. I guess there could be, uh, you know, you, you can go for Martis. Technically, it's still there. It's you rarely see it. I think the last time we saw, I don't even remember when we last saw the Martis, but it's still there. It is still part of the zero pool. Oh, They'll go for the Alpha. Okay, okay, interesting. What is it, Annabelle being able to use this to its full efficiency? But Geek Fan, they add one more layer of long distance. Macro playmaking with the Spear of Destruction from the Moscow, and they have a Yutong to really shut down that backline presence from RRQ. The question is, is, is it a Roger? Exactly. The question is, what backline presence? Exactly. If they if they go with someone that's too far Brody behind, up. it's going to be too difficult. I think Brody can still kind of Bruno work out. Brody up is the bees. That's the only viable choice, right? The Brody the, works really well against the, the B Yutong. lineup. <laughs> the B lineup. Yeah, I think I think so. I, uh, against a Moscow, Bruno does really well. The Brody does even better. And hey, we have spoken about this before. Yu Zong versus Brody. You can poke him out from the skies. And RQ, technically, they have a snowball comp. So if they really want to. Oh, oh what? Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, Irito. Uh, it, is a, a fan. it is a hero we haven't seen in a Zero long time. 0% win rate this season. Chidera played it, lost on it. Kabuki played it, lost on it. It's been a. Way too long, but Skylar used to play this quite well. Season but 12. again, it's a different season yeah. with a different set of factors here. But RRQ feel like it's just time to try and bring it out with the Alpha, with the export. It's a full on collision composition. No way out, by the way. So, literally living up to the posters, the banners from the kingdom. Do or die. And now you can finally say what you wanted to say before. What? what was that? Desperate, desperate time times. Call for desperate measures. They're scraping the barrel here for solutions again geek, against Geek Fam. We'll see if that works out and can they match up to the positioning tools that Geek Fam have. The shortcut, the Spear of Destruction. Five seconds till the, the enemy clock is ticking the for the Kings Smash of them. Kings. One more chance for them to force this to a game number three. Unless they want to Welcome give the playoffs on a silver legend. platter for the King Slayers themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number two between Geek and RRQ Hoshi. Even the majority of the players of RRQ, they're running bottom charges. They want to be as aggressive as possible. Look at that, Maloisky already trying to be pesky, be annoying. And you have to wonder right now, what's the plan when it comes to those big team fights? Is Clay supposed to take the Eternal Guard? Is that it? It does seem like one of the only big uh, <laughs> big tools they can get. Don and Luke, though. Yu Zong against Exborg. Gonna be a lot of fire, literally, in that matchup. Look at this. Okay. Boleski just buying as much time as he can. First, he already used a red tree for the purple ball, so he almost actually threatened the take there. But his experience allows him to just stay cool and go for it. Yeah. On the bottom side, though, Skylar on that Irithel against the Moscow. Oh, 2v1 on top. I don't think this is a winning lane for the Irithel even, you know? Like, because usually, Irithel, you want to outmaneuver your opponent, but when your opponent can just blink to you, it's similar to the Claude, why the Claude does okay against the Irithel. You know, they're going to go for the stun right now. On the Skylar, they might just be able to get the Revenge. kill down as well! One last shot to do oh. it! Oh! Skylar, what are you made of? How? What? Again? Again? We saw it in game number one. You thought that there would be a little glimpse of revenge coming through for Chidera from that solo kill on the Claude Jeez. and the Natan, but he turned it completely around. He gets out unscathed, and for him, that's the first blood. Chidera in a 2v1. What? That just doesn't seem like it's supposed to happen, and now both teams face off, trying to hold each other from the level four, preparing to go for the neutral objective. And RRQ definitely have the more aggressive composition. Do they want to go for this, though, and risk getting comboed? 
Black Dragon farm used up. Finn, oh, with a flicker early. Trying to get out of the death is welcome that hasn't been popped even yet. But look at that damage. Coming down loop with Petrify as well. They're going to find one, and that is a lot of damage placed down onto the back line. But Loisky will be able to help take another death in his welcome as a retribution was secured by Reyes. Clay actually flicks forward to go for Muloyski, but that is another trade down and Finn will fall. Now another teleport. Lucas come back from the base. It's a furious dive to cut them off. Clay still surviving. Luke 1 HP and my goodness, what a crazy sequence of events. Overall though, oh, what? Spear, Spear of Destruction. Boom. What a run down. Wow. The last insanity. What is going on? From down under. Overall though, the turtle taken by Geek Fam, they sure have control right here. And speaking of the emblems earlier, because we weren't allowed time to talk about it, Beloisky has the quantum charge on the chip. Usually we see him with the, with the concussive blast to try and help with the clearing, with extra bit of damage. But he wants to be sneaky. He wants to be able to like move, uh, escape from sticky situations and he wants a bit more sustain because he's playing this style of disruption to try and stop Fersic. It hasn't worked out so Ooh. far though. They're going for Vin. Wait, what? Fersic. Spear of Al Natalia. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Reset. Reset. Okay. <laughs> Let's take a look at the audience prediction. It seems like, ooh, very interesting. 60% for RRQ. That's a different flavor that we've seen. Usually we see the kingdom just really dominate in these prediction rates, but it looks like either the kingdom has started to falter or Geek have amassed the fan immunity even more this season. Oh my god, oh my god. What the heck, dude? Oh. That was, oh, that was a 5v1. And now it might be another 5v1 as Skyler gets dove on, forced back under his own tier one. Boloyski going on to Clay, who's stolen the Eternal Guard and look at the timer. Perfect timing for the turtle to spawn back up top. For both of these junglers, we do see that Ray is already at level 7. Rusik is caught a little bit behind. Oh, there you go. Okay. So they are equalized right now, and it does look like RRQ want to go for a contest. Dawn and Vin are already in position. You can see the Eternal Guard as well for Clay, but they already open it up. Whoa. Very early, actually. Play with the Eternal Guard on the final slash from Vin as well. On to Ray, who still has the death as well. Kapur petrifying the Furious Diamond. A lot of AoE in the back left with the Eternal Guard from a boy. Ray with the Retribution securing it, even though Ferris goes in with the Furious Falcon. It's a bit too late as the Dragon Tail catches a boy. Still able to flick around a clay place. Still chasing, but look at the back. Vin now just trying to desperately survive. Goes in for vengeances on vengeances, but he isn't Batman. And that's a two for two. But Geek secure the neutral objective. Despite this aggressive composition for RRQ, they just haven't been able to find the same kind of success. The Skylar, surprisingly, isn't doing too bad in the lane. He is going to be behind, though, due to all the pressure and the possibilities of the gangs coming in. Oh Beloisuke! God, that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four! All four members! Teleporting in, but now Dawn actually takes it as well. The last insanity to Genera, but he's still able to get some more of the hits. And they will actually be able to just trade it one. Four, two. Oh wow, all things considered, actually, it's straight at two for one by Geek Fam, so they don't really come out on top there. Arc is showing again that they do have aggression, they do have the damage. I feel like right now though, they're just kind of caught bewildered in who exactly are they trying to dive onto for maximum value, and where are they supposed to try and, and initiate and start the whole process of just being aggressive and just diving in towards the back. Because whoever is the main target for RRQ, I feel like at this point in the game, they can take out whether that's a boy or Chidera. Aloyski's so annoying though. Mm -hmm. He was waiting for Skyler and then he gets information that they traded lanes. And so he's now back in the top lane to look for a trade onto Skyler, looking for a kill, a shutdown onto this man. I feel like now it's a bit of a reverse situation though. The longer the game kind of goes, I feel like RRQ actually don't do too badly in the late game, right? With the Alpha AoE, with, with, with the x Borg, with the Valentina technically as well. Oh, but Beloisky, he smells a, a fight, but no. <laughs> Vin gets out. It's okay, Luke can teleport back again. They get some map pressure and they get the Moskov fast lane up top. And now, no shortcut available. Geekfam still holding on to the turtle. Three now at level 10 versus level 9. 
Is he close to 10? I think he needs to clear a camp first. I don't think he can contest. Tersic is so far back. Eternal Guard, though, still. Ray secures it. Tersic was zoned completely out of the team fight. And Luke with a Petrifier into the back of play. Eternal Guard, not going to do up. The Spear of Alpha canceled out. And Geek Fam now look to collapse once again. That's Belozzi with a Flicker forward. Looking for some more damage. As Don will be sliced and terrified and shut down. Luke with a Furious Dive into the back with the help of the heart. Or Eternal Guard, rather. Final Slash into Clay's damage will send Luke to the Shadow Realm. So that's a trade, Luke for Dawn. And now Geek still pick up the neutral objective, but all these neutral objective takes, all these team fights, they haven't been clean for Geek either. So if they keep trading like this, who has the advantage? I feel like it's somewhat equal, especially later on. There's a chance that Geek can go for the uh, shortcut plays around the map. I feel like when it comes to fighting prowess, it's kind of equal. But when it comes to maneuvering around the map, now that's a whole different story. Geek Fam has a huge advantage there. And right now, they're still able to accumulate quite the gold advantage. It's kind of fluctuating up and down, but it's still slowly but surely rising for that Geek Fam because RRQ, they can't really farm as aggressively or as freely as they would want to because they're always concerned about Beloisky, right? When he can, if he can show up out of nowhere and start a, a pickoff. Skyler picks up another item. I think it's a Berserker's Fury. Yep, he has a Berserker's Fury and the has claws, but look at this. That's a defensive last insanity. I might be able to just pressure this turret take easily now with that last insanity being used up. Ray just walking up, clearing out this wave, trying to help and poke it down. As the rest of RQ look towards mid lane now. With the Berserker's Fury pickup, is that a power spike for Skylar yet or not yet? Are we still waiting for something else? Wait a minute. Uh, does that answer your <laughs> question? Uh, what power spike if we have <laughs> that much map pressure? Beloisky is just standing in these bushes and enabling the team to look for pickoffs. Just punishing the movements of our Q Clay now. Give him some damage, Don already used the last Insanity earlier, now uses it again defensively. But look oh. at that damage, Eternal Guard also popped in, not able to connect this Vin. Looks for a possible engage again. Beloisky in the midst of it all. Able to find the stun on the Clay. And now the oh. Fear of Misery as well. Clay walked into the bush. Oh no, you hate to see it. The bush of disaster. The counter engage. Poor Clay. He gets immediately deleted from the game. And now, once again, the Lord Dance. But again, what? I was talking about the power spike, and you're right. I mean, like, what power spike? If Skyler's not even there, but now he's back. So. It is definitely a power spike, but considering that the Moskov also already is on three items, they're kind of equal in, in a way, but Skylar has the advantage of being able to basic attack while moving, right? That's always the advantage that an Aerithel has. So, in a way, he can be a bit more safe, a bit more maneuverable in these fights. But they gotta go in together, man. There's a lot of moments right here, like earlier, where Clay seems to be trying to get some more, trying to equalize seeing the low HP bars from Geek Fam, but everyone else isn't on the same picture, and now Skylar once again gets jumped on. Again with the flank, and it's all on the Skylar. They go, oh my god, they go to the Finn, and he gets deleted as well. Where's Chidera in this skirmish? He's still in the midst of it all, able to dodge away from the last insanity with the abyssal step, and he looks for more. Dog taken down by the spear. Chidera going wild, and now Ray tops him down. It's a killing spree for Ray, and it is a big win for Geek Fam. 4 4 0, oh, make it 5 with the Lord. Again, once again, again and again and again, it's always the, the Crown Prince that stays strong alone. All his other members, his teammates have gone. And the Lord has also been taken away from them as well. Geek picking up all the scraps, getting all the value left, right, and center. Chidera now with another oh. item, the Malefic Roar. Wait. They were preparing for an ambush there. They wanted the final slash to be comboed by Skylar, waiting in the bush. He spent the whole time there just waiting in that bush instead of farming, trying to set up a trap for Geek Fam, but it did not come through. And Boloisky is already waiting behind them. And you can see the positioning. They don't want to leave the turret. They're concerned about Boloisky. And once they see him, now they'll be able to move a bit more. But with the Lord coming in, they're going to be losing multiple turrets. And even though the, the kills don't look too far different, but like the gold difference is just massive. And now they go in for another, it's just done. Forced back completely. Oh man. 
this is just a painful siege to watch too because Geek Fam, they're trying to build up these waves. Only one though, one wave will be crashing down into that base. Black Dragon form enabling it now as Don jumps in with Last Insanity, trying to deal some damage, but doesn't have any of the stacks spin. Able to get the final stack, but it's actually gonna help Geek Fam and the back to Dara just wreaking havoc. Now jumping back again on the Skylar and Vin as well. My goodness, they don't care from the turrets. They will just go straight for the bases of Oil on just in with a flicker and find Skylar on a terrified. 12 minutes and 31 seconds. The Kingslayers have done it again. They've done it against Kings. Now they do it against the Crown Prince. Welcome to playoffs, Geek Fam. After a long drawn journey here at MVL ID Season 13, we will be seeing the Geeks move forward to the next stage. We will see them move forward to the playoffs once again. And RRQ now are one game away of making history, of not making it.